Good afternoon. It's approximately 2.56 p.m. Um, just one second. It's wine. I know JD is excellent for you, but right now it's wine. And it calms me down. I'm doing my life, my life. Sometimes it needs something to calm it down. <coughs> I'm going to be coughing a little. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. I wrote a little piece here. Um, and I hope you can appreciate it. I really mean that. I say, um, I've just had a beautiful shower, which I did have. A nice and warm shower. I love warm showers. I always feel clean, neat and clean. I do like feeling neat and clean. But it was when I sat down at my dining room table and booted my computer, it suddenly occurred to me, what a human nut, and I really mean nut, really is. And I don't know why I suddenly thought that, I did just flash a thought, but I did. For reasons of humor, and there really is no humor, none. Let's just call him, this character, Mr. Crazy Nutty. It's a little humor. That's the funny part. Mr. Crazy Nutty. Sort of like the Nutty Professor in a Jerry Lewis film. The thing is, though, Mr. Crazy Nutty didn't exactly have the IQ of Nutty Professor. Just the nuttiness. You'll see why. We will be talking about greed, horrible, everything. I'll try to keep our relationship limited for time. We were teenagers and enrolled at UTM, UTM, then named Arendelle College back then. The red brick student residence were just built and Mr. Crazy Nutty moved into one of the residences. I would live with Mr. Crazy Nutty for two and a half years. It was amazing. It was really genuinely amazing. And then, sadly, he disappeared from him. Hallelujah. Many years later, he reappeared in my life again. At that time, he was thinking of buying a house. My dear father, and I came to love my dad, you know. You don't always love your dad. I sort of loved him. My father had just passed away, so I offered to buy half the house with him. You know the nut. He told me he would make a decision in three months. Stupidly, I mean stupidly, I moved into the house. My dad had given me most of the furniture. This is very expensive, heavy mahogany, and there was no Mr. Crazy or Nutty helping me. And I do recall, and will never forget it, 
As I moved into the townhouse, it occurred to me I was making a, a big, big, big mistake. Even still, I wanted to have an, an an investment. I was looking for an investment. I now had a sum of money. I wanted to invest it somewhere. That's only logical. But then something would take a fall. I mean, really, really fall. You don't quite realize how close. I'm not going to go into the details, but I will say I had three brain bleeds. One, whoops, one, two, three brain bleeds and found myself staggering down Bloor Street West. I mean that. Staggering. You know, like staggering people laugh, sort of laugh at. They have the person really is suffering from a brain bleed. It's how in incredibly stupid you know, some people can be. I found myself staggering down Bloor Street West to St. Joseph Hospital. I had been there three times. Three times that hospital. Um, some love that hospital. From my perspective, I would say I've never met more incompetent people of all. One happened to be a neurologist who thought I was having migraines. The stupid man didn't know I was having one, 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 two, three bleeds. It was there they would finally do a CAT scan and they discovered I had a bleeding artery. It's very important to you know. That's really, really important. Most people today don't know nothing about their own brain. Hockey, for example, you get a concussion. You should get yourself out of hockey. You're setting yourself up for an artery. Yeah. I don't understand the ignorance people have towards uh, uh, how we live and why and such we live. Even today, and this is most important, 50, that's five zero, 50 percent of those who do have a bleeding artery will die. Be within, I think, three weeks in or outside the hospital, you will die. You are dead. And an addition, which doesn't end there, is an additional 20 to 30 percent will be disabled. And some of it ain't exactly pleasant to see. As it happened, they rushed me up to St. Michael's. It just happened to be the same hospital where my mother died from that same reason and hospital it's exactly at St. Michael's. Um, even though you are in one state, you are also in a, another state. That other state is, I'm terrified of going into that hospital because I know that is where my mother died. And this sort of thing tra is transferred from one generation to another. That same fear was transferred from my grandmother to my mother, and my mother to me. Uh, statistically, in a family, it's going to happen to one of three. Three. And it, I knew when I was watching my mother die, it would be me. Uh, she died uh, like that. When I woke, I learned medical, I should say medical staff never seemed to directly inform the patient. Haven't you ever understood? 
feel on that uh, when you're a patient that uh, the nursing staff uh, or medical staff never tell you what's going to they'll tell your, 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 your parents or your uncles or your friends but not you sad <laughs> that, uh, that the neurosurgeon had cracked open that's what they had it's that side they had to crack it all open there's a big opening there um, it's a sizable amount of my skull I further learned that the aneurysm had bled three times now this is really important fact I already mentioned what one um, bleed means is 50 percent you calculate what three bleeds of three different times you figure out the odds. I say, oh, I've written this to explain that. So later, provided by doctor's calculation, and given that the aneurysm bled three times, true, my life rate was 5%. How I got out of it is a mystery to me. And this is very important, too. Some would be joyful to know them. I wasn't. Not at all. It's true I did have serious, as a consequence of the bleeding, I did have serious aphasia. Although they diagnosed, the staff diagnosed as dysphasia. Um, we have a debate on that. It was more than just communication, but it was also where I was and so on. Uh, I'm bred enough to know that. It was after 26 days in or so in St. Michael's Hospital, and, and you got to know more than <laughs> more more than a day is too much in a hospital. After 26 days in the hospital, which we could not communicate, I could not, could not tell them. They thought I was agitated. I could not verbally tell them. Uh, my mother had died here from the same th thing, and it unnerved me. I could not tell them. So after 26 days or so in St. Michael's, I returned back to the townhouse. The government actually snuck away from the hospital. And uh, curiously, in the uh, townhouse, this guy I never got to thank. But um, he called uh, Saint, he, a, a doctorate in, in, I'm not quite sure which. But he called in the town. I was, he called St. Michael's Hospital, and he was somehow associated with him, and stopped the police coming to take me back to the hospital. What they did do is the government or whomever organization did provide a nurse to come to see me for a three period of time and ensure that I was taking anti-seizure drugs. I have to take them. I don't have a choice. It's absolutely mandatory. Uh, this is not schizophrenia. This is not manic depression. This is quite entirely different. But it stops um, uh, the problem and it's, I'm obliged to take it. And it's something I, well, I'm very loyal about taking it. And I do know I will take it uh, till I die. I should po point out, though, uh, there are negatives. Um, the drug will also kill the enamel of your your teeth. This is so sad. I had beautiful teeth. I have to say, you know, but after 22 or three or 25 years ago, and now. It will kill the enamel on the teeth, and it will cost you a fortune. The government, if they're involved, will end up paying what I 
and discovered approximately 50% of it. And I had to find 50% elsewhere in order to keep my teeth. They are oh, with one exceptional tooth, wisdom tooth, all of my teeth are there. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, after you're 65, the government will do shit all. Curious this. I won't mention anything about my car either. It's an important thing. And I have to say, and I truly mean this, sometimes incompetence can, can be quite beneficial. And I say thank you, incompetence. I really do thank that. And I would say, let's get back to Mr. Crazy Nugget. Before I do, I've got to have another class of wine to put up with Mr. Crazy Nutty, because this is not pleasure. One second. Maybe two for me. Because I could no longer speak, no one could understand what I said. And I had problems with ability to, to write, read. I began immediately, and I'm, I'm, I'm that way, I'm very orderly. And I was no, norm because of through my mother and grandmother. I know, knew what, what had happened. I began re-educating myself for the next long walk. It's true. That's reputation, reputation, traffic stop sign, for example. Reputation, reputation. Then the ugly day happened. One day, a serious, this was a serious, ugly day, Mr. Crazy Nutty heavily thumps his way up to the top floor. And without so much as a knock, knock on the office door. No, oh, by the way, you can actually see my office area in Greg Troy dash title colon triple dot how I died but didn't mostly one or two. So you'll see my little war room. It was out without one word of explanation, not even a syllable. He gave me a note, can you believe this? Which detailed what I could and could not do in Mr. Crazy Nutty's townhouse. Dash 53 Keel Street. I'll avo avoid, reluctantly, I'll avoid specifying the city. That same original townhouse we once discussed, I might own half of. Never came about here. Weirdest of all, Mr. Crazy nutty specified but not explicitly if i had another medical problem such as last he would kick me out the door ugly as it may sound that is the truth and his fears should not exist for me paying my rent the one that should be going to a mortgage company. The first I got back to the townhouse, and I was more than a little confused by everything that will happen to you after brain surgery of that nature. You know, hunk away, 
disturbance. I, I, I'm gonna, you're going to be out of things, sort of, for a while. But even given that, I managed to scratch out a money check. I think I had to write a number of them because it kind of confused me. You see, as I repeat, I'm an orderly and honest person. And I gave him the goddamn check. I don't know if Mr. Crazy not, Naughty actions were illegal. I do wonder whether they are illegal. But if they aren't, I su strongly suggest to get out of the city and province. I mean that. Any city or province would prohibit any kind of creature to do that. Don't live in it. Don't even live in that kind of country. That's disgusting behavior. But either way, and if they understand ethics, I highly suggest the crazy nutty person be locked away and the nearest crazy nutty institution. I ain't kidding. Gonna end it with this. It begins with, by the way, but just out of curiosity, did Mr. Crazy Nutty include my rent, you know, the one that should be going to a mortgage company, include it in his income tax? What about others who rented there? If he hasn't told Canada taxation that he was bringing this money, it rent money in. I think they should be, um, what were the others who rented there? I meant to say that, sorry. One second. I need to be calmed down again. I'm telling you what I went through. You need to be calmed down and to put up with these creatures. I swear they ain't exactly humans, you know. What about others who rented them? If he or she wasn't, hasn't. How does Mr. Crazy Nutty actually owe Revenue Canada? I, th I, think, I think they should look carefully at Mr. Crazy Nutty's income history, as I suspect there were many others, other renters too. In conclusion, until this point, are really quite accurate. And with a thank you, I say, I am just writing a note, a note, mind you, to Mr. Crazy Nutty, period, nothing more. Just giving him that note. Um, I feel saying that a little more comfortable and I thank you for listening and always beware always beware